Today we're going to talk about depression, a very serious topic, and we want to be very upfront and honest. We don't have the answers. We're not claiming to be licensed therapists or have the solutions that are going to remedy and fix everything. We just want to make room to be able to talk about depression and especially what it's like for those trying to follow God and be obedient to him, believe in him in the middle of experiencing depression. So I hope it's encouraging. Love you guys. Double chair. It's a double chair. Who's there? You have reached another dumb Christian double chair. Today I have with me a very special guest from Phoenix, Arizona. Michael. And um, we are going to really be pressing into some difficult things that maybe a lot of us, probably all of us, have experienced at some point. Depression. What are we talking about today? We're talking about what it's like to go through depression, what how it affects us mentally, physically, just all around. Yeah, relationships, uh, yeah, privately. And how does it interact with our faith? How do we walk through faith when we're depressed and hopeless? And like, how does it fit together? Does it fit together? And as we explore this thing, we're going to try and really unpack such, shed some light on some really heavy things. We might get a little bit colorful. The Bible might get a little bit real. So buckle up and welcome to Dumb Christian. Um, my wife and I have both walked through seasons of depression. I still have scars on my arm where I used to cut because I was really suffering from depression. Um, and, and a lot of times when people talk about depression in correlation to faith and Bible and God and, and, and scripture or whatever, it usually comes from the perspective like this is what we experienced while we were depressed. And, and, and I hear a lot of like these um, motivational speeches or sermons or stuff. And it's based on like, oh, this is how God got me through it. And I've always thought it'd be really valuable if we could have like a, just a bare bones, honest, real conversation about faith in the Bible in the middle of the depression. Like this is I'm, what I'm going through right now, because the, the sermons and the stuff about what it was like doesn't really necessarily I've felt have a significant impact on someone who's walking through it. Like, yeah, that's great. But what does that mean for me? Do you know what I'm talking about? It sucks. Right. But like, the, the hardest part for all of us is just like, okay, yeah, I went through depression 10 years ago, right. a year ago, but what was I thinking? What was my thought process? Like how, yeah, I know it was crappy. I know it was whatever word you want to put to being negative, but those are just words. Yeah. You, it's been, I mean, even a year you could in some cases be like, yeah, what was that? I remember being, I remember being sad. I remember being sad, but why? And then right. in your rational mind, you're like, that was no big deal. Yeah. Why am I worried about my job? Why am I worried about whatever? Right. And, and, and so for all my dumb Christians out there, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to be very clear that, um, we're about to kind of dive into some really heavy duty stuff that you're experiencing and walking through right now. Correct? Yes. Give me a little bit of a recap. Tell me who you are and just a, a quick synopsis of what you're walking through right now. So as far as life, I'm in a, se a season of singleness. I own my own house. I have a job. I have a car. I have a place to live. And yeah. That's and, and where do you quick. live? I live in Phoenix, uh, north side of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So I've got a long drive to work, but yeah. So so give me a, a quick overview of like what are we going to be talking about today? Because this is your life. We're going to be talking about what it's like to walk and experience work, and oh hey, I've got depression on in this little corner of my mind. Like 
how how do I deal with it at work or how's it affecting me at work? How does it affect me at at church? How does it affect me at home? How does it affect me on my drive to work or or wherever I'm going at yeah, the moment? When you're with your family or when you're by yourself or at the store buying gum. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow, depression affects our gum purchases. Yes. Yeah. So there's something there. And and so one of the things that you and I have been kind of like pressing into and talking about is trying to make sense of those irrational thoughts, which we'll unpack if you're not quite sure what I mean by that. We'll, we'll get into that. But there's real value in being able to, to, to like clarify, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm feeling in the moment. Because when we're experiencing these irrational thoughts, we don't fully understand what we're thinking and feeling. But if we can explain it, put it into words and say, oh, this is what I'm thinking and feeling, then we are able to interact with it. If it's just abstract and like a, a you know a sloppy pancake in our brain, then we don't know what to do with it. But if we can begin to put shape and meaning and say, oh, I feel anxiety over this situation and or this event, this phrase, this type of person, this type of relationship causes me anxiety, then we can start to frame it, interact with it, and do something about it. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Be whatever you say, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so that's really, I think, as you and I were trying to explore this, I just felt like, okay, if, if you're good with this, I really want to make sure like my listeners and you understand I'm not trying to take advantage of this situation you find yourself in to create an episode. Like, I, I, I genuinely feel like if we can walk through this together, we might be able to create something of value that together we can e encourage each other, but also maybe encourage someone else. Yes. Right. For sure. Like, I mean, you were in the middle of some of my episodes and right. just coming in and be like, Ooh, I don't know what to say. Right. And then just seeing me in my state and being able to, as you said, I've got this sloppy pancake of whatever I'm feeling, mm -hmm. but then how do I communicate that? How do I take being irrational, feeling these thoughts, and how do I communicate it to somebody who either experienced it a long time ago or who has never experienced it yeah. and put it to where they can be able to remotely understand? But then also it helps you, Right. Yes. Like then you can start to like figure out how to navigate through these feelings when you can understand what they are. Right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So probably the most common conversation you and I have is about how this depression and whatever's causing it, wherever it's coming from affects you in a variety of different ways. Why don't you unpack that for us a little bit? Yeah. So just, the problem is just you get, I get these waves of, okay, maybe I'm okay. And then this wave just comes crashing over out of nowhere. Like I could build my defenses. I could do whatever I want, but I'm experiencing all kinds of emotions like um, irritability. I'll be at work and just, just feeling really tense, really irritable. I'm like, why, why am I feeling this? Mm -hmm. But I've got this feeling of okay i'm ready to snap like i want somebody to look at me wrong so i could just Rah! what am i right, gonna do like right. <laughs> ready to jump and then as quickly as it comes it could be five minutes later it could be 20 minutes later 30 minutes later and then i'm like why did i feel this and it's all consuming like that's the only thing that you can see and you yes. don't know where it came from exactly but then also having the realization of okay this isn't rational but I'm experiencing this. What do I do about it? Like how, if I'm at work and I have tasks to do, how do I, do I get up and leave? Do I tell my boss? How do I continue right. to function when other people are relying on me to do my job or I have to actually walk with others and say, hey, we've got this problem. How do we solve it together? Yeah, and, and just for those of you listening, um, we're going to walk through something that Michael is is living out right now. And we don't necessarily have a an answer. We don't have answers. Yeah. Like like why are we having this conversation? As especially being in the middle of depression, the biggest thing that usually comes to mind is I'm alone. Mm. I'm alone. I'm alone. 
with, you, with all the craziness with all the craziness like even day-to-day stuff i walk i walk around okay i've got this fog that i can tell is there but it takes somehow it takes all my energy all my processing that i don't have any energy for anything else mm-hmm. like you could walk up and say hey michael what do you want for lunch what's what's lunch oh wait what's what th- what's that word oh really like what like I'm so focused by whatever fog that I don't have this tangible word of like, I can't describe, Oh, it's what is it? So the same thing that kind of like consumes you and makes you furious for no reason. And every reason also can manifest in something where you're just, you can't even think about simple, normal things. Yes. But then also you have the realization of, okay, say you come again, same example. What do you want for lunch? I don't know. That's the only thing I could think like of. Like you're but paralyzed. Then, and then seeing, oh, well, why can't you make a decision? I'm frustrated because you can't make a decision. Like I know I, I want to make a decision, but I can't even think. Mm. It's almost like, okay, I know, say Chili's, McDonald's, whatever exists. But in that moment when you ask me, one, not making a decision, but I can't even think, what's a food place? Right. Where 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 do you get food from again? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then you're like reeling through, if you can even think clearly, you're thinking through the menu and then you're like, I don't even know what my body needs right now. I can't, I can't escape this weight of whatever is plaguing me that I, I don't have enough capacity to see beyond this fog that's right in front of me is yes. that is that fair? and then like hate to say it but like the easiest decision is i'm not going to eat or hey i need to call somebody for work i need to ask them a question i can't do that yeah i can't I, i'm just not going to call them i'm going to procrastinate like the not in- because oh. i want to procrastinate but because i don't have have that ability to talk or if someone talks to me i'm blah, 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 blah. what do i say I don't have the mental to comprehend the words they're saying or in the case where you where we were together you're saying words and I'm receiving them completely different and we talk about it the next day and you're like wait a minute that's not what I said right and you're like that that's how mm-hmm. I interpreted that right because whatever was weighing on my mind my heart my soul I couldn't see and think clearly right man to the point where you're like if i have to make any decisions it's gonna add even even adding the smallest amount of anxiety to what i'm already experienced will put me over the breaking point right oh yeah i wanted to add that it's not just it's anxiety too because now it's like i know i can't make a decision but now i'm anxious that hey you're gonna come ask me what's for lunch right i have to make a decision i have to make a decision oh So then you're worried about making the decision and then you're worried about worrying about making the decision. Yeah. And then you're going back and (laughs) forth, back and forth. Right. Right. And, and as you've kind of experienced this, this kind of growing building burden, because you're unable to think and, and process things clearly, almost sometimes you've shared with me that, you feel like you kind of fracture into different versions of yourself. Not like, you know, a different, you know, a third party who's not you, but different versions of yourself. You were talking about like my, my, me and my body feel very differently than me and my emotions and me and my intellect. Right. Like you were right. Walk me through that. It's, Yeah, you, you've got, so let's say the emotion side of it. My emotions are now saying, hey, this is reality. I feel this, I feel this either anger. So yeah, let's say anger. Okay. I'm angry today or angry in this moment. Therefore, that's my characteristic. That's all I'm an is. angry person. That's yeah. all there is. Or I'm sad, so I must be a sad person. Or I'm anxious. I just must be very anxious. Right, and even even though you know like 10 minutes ago you weren't, that thing right it whatever the source of this burden just overflows attaches itself to you and it's like that's all i can see 
about who I am mm-hmm. is what's happening right now in this moment. Right. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm annoying. Right. Oh yeah. The whole like, Oh, you, because I'm angry now I'm a bad person because mm-hmm. I'm an angry person. It's not that I'm feeling anger, but I am an angry person. I'm a monster. I'm right. whatever you want to put to that. And that evolves, yeah, that evolves in whatever, whether it's anger or shame or shyness or yeah, being outspoken, any of those factors can be like, oh man, this now also makes me a bad person. Right. But I also want to stress on this. It's not like, oh, hey, I'm feeling angry today. So in this hour time period, like these emotions I can experience that quick. I could go through 10 different emotions in 10 seconds. Yeah. Or a couple seconds. And, and or sometimes that whole feeling could be 30 minutes. So having the, uh, that's part of the fog that as I'm experiencing all this, it's like, okay, mentally I know the truth. Or I think I know the truth. Right. Do I know the truth? Mm-hmm. But my emotions are feeling this way. And I'm like, okay, now my processing is, what is the truth in the middle of this? Because if my emotions are telling me, oh, you're an angry person, you're a monster, you're shameful, you're whatever. Or sometimes maybe it could be I'm happy. Mm-hmm where that's where all the mental fog goes to, to like try to attack, try to contain that thought or those feelings. Right. And you also shared that like when your emotions are like, you're experiencing these extreme emotions, you're feeling it physically. Yes. It's not just this thought it affects you physically. Like your body is experiencing your emotional anxiety. Yes. On like a whole new level. Like I was at work one day and everything's fine. Then all of a sudden this thought of anxiety comes in and my heart is pounding. Like I just ran a marathon. Like I I almost can't breathe. Like what's going on? Like kind of the cliche, what you see in movies where things are starting to spin around. Like, Mm -hmm what is going on, having to talk through the intellect side saying, hey, just breathe, just breathe. But even then, I'm still racing. Like, I feel like I've got to jump up. Like, I'm I'm, I'm starting to shake. Mm-hmm. Or at home, I could be there, and it's like, I'm getting aches in my thighs. I'm getting aches in my stomach. Just all different parts of me, aches in my chest, sometimes head. Just feels like the body is just twisting and wriggling and... And you've said that there have been times where you felt like your body just wanted to give out. Like, yes. Like the body's just like, please, I just stop the wriggling, stop the torture. Really what it, what you're saying is. Yeah. Cease to exist. Yeah just, yeah. just let me die. Right. But I mean, that can go even farther. Like it's not just, Oh, I can die and I can go to heaven. It's no, I don't want, any existence right because you know afterlife like just i'm tired of the feelings i'm tired of the aches that the in the middle of those it can be i know heaven is good but the pain is more than what the good ever could be because that's all you can experience in the moment yeah and and the ability to experience it's like well i'm not unconscious i'm going you know let's say for sake of argument heaven is real and and we we get to go to heaven we're self-aware we're conscious we are aware of ourselves Mm -hmm. but in that moment when we're experiencing i think don't don't let me put words in your mouth but i think you were saying like man i feel like this is who i am this is my identity right i don't want to be aware of that for eternity so i just want to cease to exist completely just dark darkness nothing yeah empty but you did say that every once in a while there's this small voice that keeps like trying to press against that struggle. Right. What's that says, voice saying? Like, God is good. Things are going to be better. <sighs> but even hearing that from people, oh, things are going to be better. It's like, you, I want to believe that. I hear what you're saying. I hear the words. I see the words in the Bible. I hear the advice people have, yeah. but I just can't feel that. Yeah. And in the middle of that fog, it's not only, I don't feel that, but do I actually believe that? Do I believe that God is good? Do I believe that God is real? Do I truly even have belief in God himself? Mm-hmm. 
And and there's this tension where it's like, I, I, there's this part of us that's like, we want to believe that. We know we're supposed to believe that. Mm-hmm. How do we walk in, in this thing that it's supposed to be true, but what I'm experiencing right now doesn't match that. Right. <laughs> and once again, we don't necessarily have the answer, but d- does anyone out there listening, like, do you know what that's like? Yeah. It's and like, oh yeah, here's something. What do you Maybe mean? we can put words of what we're feeling. I mean, as we've had our conversations, hey, I feel this. Or, I how do you put words to it? So even between us trying to discern, mm-hmm. how do we put words to? Oh, you're feeling frustrated. Oh, you're feeling depressed. Oh, you're feeling anxious. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling tension. Mm-hmm. And then you could say, "Oh, yeah, I think that's anxiety." And and maybe that's the best that we can offer as we continue to walk through this episode is like trying to put words to it because you and I spent on on the just that topic of like you you said something to the effect of my body wants to die, and I was like, "What does that mean?" And we spent like an hour trying to like put words to what does that mean? Right. Cause I'm like, Oh, Hey, I'm experiencing it. It makes 100% sense. Why don't you get this? And then you say, I don't get this. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was that one point where you're like, okay, I'm done. This is frustrating. It's annoying. I don't know how to put words to this. Mm -hmm. Let's just give up and move on. And, and I, I, I'm hoping that as we're able to continue to do that, that you find encouragement as you're able to kind of wrap your head around some stuff. But for me, that's been really, really helpful as I try to like come alongside you. It's like, okay, now I can understand a little bit better of how I can, you know, what you're going through, how I can maybe just come alongside you and be supportive like that. Taking the time to put words to it, I think in the long run will will help you, but it's also extremely helpful for me. And some, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And and so I, I, there's value in taking the time. Like it's, there's going to right. be times where you're frustrated and you're like, this is too difficult. I don't know how to do it. I just want to give up. But, but maybe that's really the value here is like, you just got to choose to keep trying to figure it out. Which is so hard to listen to in the I middle know. of it. Like, it's like, okay, today I'm I'm feeling fine. Yeah, that makes totally sense. And then, like I said, that wave just right. washes over you. It's not like, okay, here's, you know, just the little waves at the beach. Mm-hmm. It's like a tidal wave that comes through that sometimes I'm facing the opposite direction and it just yeah. comes over. And when you were starting to, like, talk about, you know, my body wants to die. I want to cease to exist. There's like, it's a difference. It's not just this idea of, I want to kill myself. And this idea actually extends beyond yourself because the way you perceive that you're affecting other people. Right. Right. Like it's not just, Oh, Hey, I I want the suffering to end. I want to look forward to better skies, but it's actually going through and saying, Hey, I'm not human. That Jonathan I'm offending you by sitting next to you. I'm offending you by being in your house. I'm offending you by texting you, by calling you, that it's better for you and the world, my family, if if I wasn't here, if my memory wasn't here. Right, if we just, if you never existed. If I never existed. And that's that's how it takes and, and warps our thinking. Right. And that's where outside of it, you can say, yes, that's irrational. Or maybe even inside of it, I can say, yes, I'm irrational, but I don't know what rational is. I can't see past this. I can't see past this. And and so you were, you were telling me that there's like this phrase that people respond when, when anyone says, you know, shares that they're feeling like they want to end it. There's this phrase that really isn't helpful. Right. It's you're being selfish. You're being Think selfish. about your family. <laughs> think about those around you. Like, uh, like even just take a second to think about like, how, how the hell is that supposed? It's like telling your significant other, just chill out. 
Right. You're like, what? How is that helping the you're situation? Like, you're like, thank you. I already <laughs> feel like a piece of shit. Right. I might as well just jump now. I'm already at right. the edge, but you're telling me I'm selfish, but knowing, hey, I know I'm being selfish. I know that I want this to end. I know that my family loves me, but I can't feel it. I can't find right. it. Where, like... I can stick my hands out. I know you're right there, but I can't see you. The fog is so deep. I can only see this far in front of yeah. me. And you're like, yes, I know I'm there, but you're just reinforcing that for just, me. Yeah, adding to that, I already feel like a crappy person. I already feel like I'm worthless. Right. Now you're attributing another worthless characteristic to me, a character trait. Mm -hmm. Really, you're reinforcing my desire to not have to deal with this anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, even for me, it's like there's lasting habits that I'm still trying to break. Like, like I said, if you've, if you've noticed, Hey, we're sitting on a bench together. You sit next to me without thinking. I go, mm -hmm. because I've for so long, I've been thinking, Oh, this person, I'm offending this person either through smell, through existing, whatever that I need to better them better their mm. existence by scooting away. And it's not that, oh, I don't want to be around people. It's I've lived with it for so long yeah. that it's so natural. And that's because such it's an, been practiced. Yeah. That's such an interesting like perspective because when Jesus tells us about the design of the church, he actually says we are each essential. Mm. Right? we're all needed we can't every part of the yeah. body is needed and n not that you're able to like under like think that and, and and own it like oh yeah i'm essential so this person can suck it up mm -hmm. right <laughs> like it, in that moment it's so consuming that i can't recognize that i have value to contribute right Oh, but I do, since you brought that up, yeah. like not only is everything, oh, I'm anxious, I'm irritable, I'm angry. There's pride in it too. There's arrogance because there's, wow. there's some times where it's like, okay, yeah, I'm angry. Now I'm done. I'm like, man, why is this person not working the way I work? Why are they not taking care the way I think I should care? Why are they not helping this person? Why are they not doing this? I must be better because I'm doing this. So it's not just negative put down emotions. It's also Man. arrogance and pride and frustration of, yes, I know this condition, but how do I get past this? Yeah. And, and just like the overwhelming anxiety, this sense of pride and arrogance and entitlement can flip like a switch. Right. I'm saying, I know I'm broken. I can, I'm broken. I can see it. I can feel it, but I don't know how to get past this. I don't know how to put it into words. Yeah. And once you've removed yourself from that situation, you're able to look back and say, okay, that was a little bananas. I was out of my mind at that moment. And I say, why was I thinking that? Why right. was I feeling that? Exactly. Yeah. Not, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I feel that? And even writing down notes from being in the middle of it and then coming back later, like, I mean, you saw that. I was like, ooh, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah, it doesn't we were, make sense. We were kind of like looking back over the past few weeks, months at notes you've taken about your own feelings and you'd read it off or you wouldn't read it. And it's like, oh, I don't know what I was thinking there. Right. Yeah. Hmm. We've talked a lot about feelings. Where do feelings fit in our relationship with God? Right. Yeah, because you've mentioned as we're reading through, you're like, oh, feelings are a gift, gift from God. I'm like, no, they're not. Feelings make feelings feel, are terrible. Yeah, why? Why are bad. feelings good? Right. Yeah. It's like I would rather not feel than experience both good and bad. Right. Right. And and then I, I we tried to shift the idea of what that means that feelings are a gift to to try and understand that. If we are feeling bad, it's a gift because it's telling us something is off. Something is wrong 
in our life, in our thought patterns, in our relationships, in our self-talk, in, in something. The way feelings are a gift when they're bad feelings is that it's telling us something's wrong. So the difference here is, well, really the significant thing about feelings is that we, we, we can understand, okay, I'm feeling off. That means something's wrong. But then what happens is we use those feelings to make our decisions, mm. right? So I'm in the moment. This is what I'm feeling. So based on my feelings, I make a decision to snap at a coworker, to, you know, go home or, or whatever the case may be. When feelings are actually just supposed to give us like an interpretation of our our circumstances, they're not actually the mode through which we were designed to make decisions. And so we've talked, don't make decisions based on feelings, but on what? On truth. On truth. And uh, to the best of your ability to understand where to find truth, where would you say we find truth? In the Bible, what God says. Yeah. And, and ultimately, like, we each have to decide if we're going to let that be the truth that we rely on and that we stand on. Um, but I would agree. I, I do think the Bible is probably a really good source for truth. Um, so what, is, what does that look like then for our feelings when we try to figure out how they play a role in our relationship with God? It's It, it can also be a roller coaster. Yeah. It's like that's taking the, okay, I know the Bible says God's good. But I don't feel that. I don't feel, like I don't it. feel it. So, God, are you good? Mm. Or as I start progressing through different stages, like, yes, God, I know you're good. Because before I'm like, yeah, God's not good. Right. But as I progress through it, yeah, God, I know you're good. But show me, remind me. Yeah. Because I can hear it, but I can't feel it. Right. Or help me separate truth from emotions. Mm -hmm. And also being irrational, because you could say, oh, things I can do are let me tell myself the truth in the middle of it. How do you know the truth or how do you know what's truth and false? If you don't know the truth to right. begin if, with, if all you, if everything is just a jumbled irrational mess. Right. Yeah. And we were also talking about like worshiping and not feeling it. Right. Cause one of the things I started recently is worshiping. It's like, wow, I can feel God. But as I go through it, I'm like, wow, it took an hour before to be like, yes, I can feel you. But now it's like, no, I don't quite feel it. Let me keep going forward. And it's like, okay, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been praising and worshiping for two hours now. I need to get on with my day. Right. But I still don't feel you, God. And so when we say worshiping, you know, it might mean something different to you than it means to Mike, than it means to me. I think basically what we're trying to say is acting in a way that glorifies God, whether it's singing songs, reading, praying, trying to give your attention and energy to God in some right. form of capacity. How, how do we take what he's given us? How do we interact with that? Mm -hmm. And like you said, yeah. through songs, through dancing, writing. Do you break dance? Do you worship through break dancing? I personally do not. <laughs> Sometimes I dance, I'm like, yeah, I think I can do that. And then, uh, then you see I start doing it, I'm like, oh. Or like, yeah, these movements could work. And then I'm like, wow, this song is longer than I thought. All right, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay, so you, you you try worshiping. And sometimes this includes praying. And you have had some very specific prayers that you're asking God for, take this away, heal this from me. How do you walk through praying those things when you don't necessarily feel like you're seeing the answer to those things. Sometimes it's praying the same thing over and over and over again. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it's like, okay, I'm done. Like I remember coming home from work one day and the whole entire way it's um, create me a clean heart, renew a steadfast spirit within me and just keep praying and praying and praying. And sometimes in tears, Right. Just to keep going, like, okay, I know this. I know your I know your word, but it's not working. It's not working. And and so then why do I bother keep praying? 
because I'm not seeing anything good from it. Right. But then on top of I'm not seeing fruit of my prayers, what about when you're looking at God's promises and not seeing fruit there? Right. You still question, do these, these, I can see, oh, hey, Jonathan, this promise is working in your life. God is there Mm. with you when he says he is, but that doesn't apply to me because I don't feel it. I don't see it. And there's one verse in particular that you've shared with me several times that you really, really wrestle with because it's a scriptural promise. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. What was that verse? I can't for the life of me remember. Jeremiah 29, 13. If you seek me. Yes. If you seek me. With your whole heart. You'll find me. Terrible. Yes. Right? So, you, no, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. There it is. And, and I have to ask myself, God, am I not seeking you with all my heart? Because I feel like I'm giving you my whole heart. There's nothing left for my heart to give. Right. And... I'm not seeing, and I'm not seeing. I'm not, I'm not finding you. But I have to say, like even in the first stages of me walking through this, I do the oh, it's not working, so I'm just going to give up. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm mm-hmm. going to find a distraction somewhere else to help me give me something to focus on to go away. But now it's like no, I need to press in. And sometimes I ask myself, why am I still pressing in? Mm-hmm. Why am I still doing this? Because that's how I used to walk as well. Right. And yeah. And then, then you're, then you kind of almost cycle back because you're like, well, I thought I was seeking you with my whole heart. If I'm not finding you, then I must not be. And if I can't determine which part of my heart I'm not seeking you in, that just makes me a giant piece of shit. Like, right. Right. The cycle just keeps going and going. And then you're left frustrated. How do I get out of this? Like, like you said, God, I am seeking you. Yeah. Or he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Or th- Am I not seeking you first? Yeah. And in that, we've also had some conversations where it's like, there are some things that you've become aware of that I, I maybe I ha- am not surrendering this. Maybe I'm not seeking the Lord in this thing, or I'm not mm-hmm. trusting him in this thing. Yeah. I mean, the question you always ask me and I always get annoyed with, you always go, why, Michael? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? Why are you thinking that? Why are you feeling that? Why are you saying that? And even sometimes in the moment as I answer, I'm like, yeah, that's stupid. I'll stop mid-sentence, yeah. mid-thought and be like, yeah, it's not worth it. But, you know, even in that moment, I think it's really important because until we say something out loud it remains abstract. So even if it's right. silly, we maybe we can't recognize it's silly until we say it out loud. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's real value even in saying those nonsensical silly things because then you can finally acknowledge that piece and say, oh, I don't need that. Right. But until you say it, you're stuck with it. Right. You've also shared that... Um, one of the things that's been helpful for you is music. Right. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, it's been like, it'll be like aha moments. Like, oh, hey, I can listen to this song. And this, I get what this artist is saying. They're able to take the feelings that I share, even though they may not be the specific feelings, but it's like, wow, they can put that into into words. Mm-hmm. Like say, hey, Jonathan, yeah. listen to this song. And you'd be like, oh, hey, what what is it? But it says what I'm feeling. Yeah. Or as I've said, hey, maybe it's not the lyrics that are describing it, but it's their energy behind it. It's like you can hear in their Mm -hmm. voice how frustrated they are, Mm. how they know they're being irrational. Yeah. Like you can hear parts of desperation, bitterness, frustration. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, that's what I'm feeling. And it helps to know, hey, I'm not alone. Other people are suffering as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there is this, you know, like we talked about, like some of those songs aren't necessarily like edifying and encouraging. Right. Right. So there is value in in music that is able to articulate for us what we're thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. But then if we linger too long there it can almost start to like reinforce those feelings. Right. Yeah. 
talk a little bit about um you you are trying to process through what to do with yourself when you experience moments of reprieve and peace it's man it's you feel the fog for so long you feel the emotional roller coaster you feel your body just saying i want to be done with this and sometimes i pray for peace sometimes i don't but sometimes it's like Oh, hey, I'm not feeling anything. Like you get a moment of peace. I get a moment of peace where the mind is quiet. The emotions aren't there. The body's no longer aching out loud. It's just, you're like, I'm noticing I don't feel this. But then in that moment, like, I'm so used to having to fight what Mm -hmm. is true, what is not. Do I need to take care of my body? Do I not take care of my body? Like, are, are these emotions... Do I need to try to take them captive that now it feels like I have so much free time and I'm like, what do I do with this time? Do I watch TV? Do I go on a hike? Do I ride my bike? Do I, what do I do? And then for me in my cycle, part of my cycle is, oh, I need to be busy. So then I'll jump in. Okay. I need to go do this project, do that project. And then I'm thinking, oh, this gives me rest but I come out of it exhausted physically, mentally. And then that process starts tumbling again. Oh, Hey, these depression is mm-hmm. coming back. Right. And then in waves, it's like, okay, no, like I've even had to dial back on activities and things that I've committed to in my life in the morning. And then by the afternoon, I'm like, Oh, Hey, maybe I should add this and this back Right. because I don't, it's such a foreign feeling yeah, like, it's, like I'm comfortable being uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Yeah, almost like you f- don't know what to do when you're not. Right, it's almost like a safe space, even though it's not a safe right, space. Right, even though it really sucks ass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, I want that horrible, terrible experience in my life just because I don't know anything else. Right, which sounds completely dumb. And like irrational. That makes right, irrational, right. but... but until you feel that and experience mm-hmm. it. I, I think there's got to be probably a lot of people who know what that's like. Right. It, you know, it might be a little bit, it's got to be different for each one of us. But yeah, I think, I think you're onto something there. Mm. And then one of the ways you've tried to respond in, in an effort to think maybe this is a positive spin on my suffering is you thought, well, maybe this is my thorn. Right. What does that, what does that mean? So when Paul wrote in the Bible that he asked God, he, he wanted something. We don't, the Bible doesn't say, mm-hmm. but God says, my grace is sufficient for you. This is my thorn to remind me that this is not permanent. Or Paul he doesn't, said, he doesn't use that. those exactly. Yeah, but he's but, got something going on in his life. We, we, think maybe it's a physical ailment or maybe he's suffering from depression. He has something painful in his life. Right. He asks God to take it away. God says, what? My grace is sufficient for you. Okay. So here's God saying, my grace is enough, right? You're really suffering. You're in this really sucks right now, but my grace is enough. That can be a really hard pill to swallow. Right. And so you've kind of been wrestling with this idea that, Maybe this depression that con- is all consuming sometimes, maybe this is just my thorn. Right. It's either my thorn or I sit and ask like, what, what sin was so great to give me this thorn? Mm-hmm. But that's the problem solving side of me. Sure. Like, sure. oh, something's, this happened for a reason, but maybe God has a different reason. But mm-hmm. this is the only thing I can logically come and and put my mind on so I have something to maybe strive for. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, now I need to go fix this. Because it's uncomfortable waiting. It's uncomfortable to be like, okay, maybe this doesn't last. Maybe there is the light at the end of the tunnel that people say. Right. But I don't have a timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how long is this going to last? Is this something I have to endure my whole life and I just have to learn that your grace is better than this thing, man, that's, that's tough. And then I ask myself, okay, if this is forever, 
if I, you know, lived to a full life, 60 years is a long time. Dude, how a long do you have to go until you're 60? No, 60 more years. Oh, 60 more. Yeah, okay, so like, maybe. Can I take 60 more years of this? Right. Can I endure? When, yeah, when Paul says, consider it a light momentary affliction. Like, uh, okay, buddy. <laughs> Especially when you read in the Bible, you're like, oh, hey, yeah, he's talking about it here. Flip the page. Oh, hey, he's happy again. Right, right. In one second, he's like, oh, this, this thorn I can't get rid of. And then over here, he's like, oh, Jesus is good and God is great. And and you're like, I wish mine was a flip of a page. <laughs> how do you, yeah, how do you, I, I think Paul does demonstrate that there is some way that it is possible to walk in the joy of the Lord while your circumstances are excruciating. Right. I don't. I don't, I, I think maybe I've experienced glimpses of that, but I don't know how to do that all for another 60 years. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I have to ask myself like, yeah, I'm supposed to be joyful in this, but how do I feel joy? Especially when joy is different from happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it says, you know, be, jo- you have that joy that doesn't depend on what's going on in your life. Right. But what is that? Yeah, like, I know in theory I'm saved and I get to have an eternal right relationship with the Father. And there's something about that that is meant to fill me with joy. But I have such a difficult time seeing past what's right in front of me. I can't, like, I can't process eternity. That's so far down the road. All I can see is what's right now. Right. So yeah, you and I have been walking through this together, which mm-hmm. I'm super thankful for, but I can only share my experience, say that, yes, I'm irrational. I'm, I can see my frustration. I feel my frustration. I can't put things into thoughts, but I also want anybody listening to, Hey, I have somebody who's like you in my life. Oh yeah. How, how do I handle that? How, what, what do I expect? Because in the moment I could be helping somebody and know not what to say, what do I say or whatever. Like for me experiencing it, I know, Hey, if I see somebody, I know not to say, Hey, you're being selfish. You should feel, or you should not feel like you want to die. So as we walk through this, seeing me frustrated, seeing me trying to grab this intangible thought feeling Mm -hmm. and put it into words, What's your experience on your side of that? Right. And I was so, when we were like talking about how to set up and go through this episode, I I was actually struck when you brought that up and I was like, oh man, that's actually a really good perspective that maybe we need to walk through because like we'll have conversations and you'll say things that I don't understand and I need to ask clarifying questions like, what do you mean? Why do you say that? Or I'll respond with a perfectly logical answer and you respond with that doesn't make sense or I don't understand that or I don't know how to apply that in my life. And I've had, I've had some time to think about it. And there are times where yes, I get frustrated, but my frustrating, my frustration isn't on you. My frustration is like based around this idea that you're my brother, I love you, and I want to be able to offer like that support and that strength and that love and that perspective that can help and that support system. But but then I'm so limited in my ability to do those things that when I've reached my limit of, well, this is all I can know how I can help you, and that's not helping you, then I get frustrated. Not that you don't get it, but that it's like, okay, God, like you designed the church for us to bear one another's burdens. We're supposed to come alongside each other. We're supposed to like, then I start to experience that frustration. Like God, why aren't we experiencing the things you designed us to do when we're working together? Right. And, and there is, there can be frustration, but ultimately like I think for people on my end of of the relationship and the conversation is if our priority can be like 
if I can't fix this, I'm just going to love you the best that I can. Right. And, and really to have to be okay with that, to really come to terms, just like sometimes you have to come to terms with, I'm not going to get an answer right now. Maybe some of us listening, I'm not going to get an answer right now. This isn't going to magically resolve itself in the same context. Like I want to help. I want to offer that solution, but maybe I just have to be okay with, we just have to be there for each other. And maybe that has to be enough right now. We don't have a pretty bow to put around this episode. There isn't like a magical solution. I think, you know, for me, I just, I would just want to encourage people on, on either side, whether you're wrestling through the depression yourself or trying to be that help and support, just keep like trying to put words to it. That's the only thing that I would try and encourage you with. And I, what, what you got any like final thoughts of, yeah, this isn't a, yo, you must do this to right, fix yeah. it, but it's having people like yourself who are willing to take the time and say, okay, I'm frustrated. I don't understand, but I will sit with you. I will talk with you. And let's just take a second to acknowledge that like, maybe you don't have that person in your life. I don't, I mean, I don't want to pretend like there's a, Oh, this is what you do to fix that. This is how you get that person in your life. Um, I guess, man, man, I don't know. What do you say? I don't know because even with us experiencing this together, it's not like, Hey, I'm out of it now just because I have you with me. So even then that's not a guarantee. Yeah. I, I, then I would say, Hey, if that is you where you don't have that person, you have us, I guess. Yeah. You're not, man, what you're going through is normal. Like, right. You're not some wackadoo off the edge. This is like people walk through this and it sucks and it sucks. It really sucks. Cause we can't pretend, Oh, it's, it's, it doesn't suck when it does, oh, man. It really depression really sucks. I hope that if nothing else, you have been encouraged that someone else has gone through it. Other people are currently going through these, these things that overwhelm us and, and make us unable to see clearly and rationally and, 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 and yet there is something that we're aspiring to. We do have hope that even though we can't see it, sometimes we still hold on to that hope. However lightly we can, that Jesus is better. That there is something at the end of it that God will get us through it. And we hope that he, he is, will be faithful to answer his promises. Seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. You know, ask, seek, knock, and the door will be open. And and while you're in it, at least, if nothing else, know that you're not alone. And that is us, just a couple of dumb Christians trying to walk with you guys and encourage you guys. Leave us a comment. Right. What meant something to you? What, what did we miss that uh, maybe you have been able to put words to? We'd really appreciate that. Uh, But I have been your host, Jonathan, the dumb Christian. And I'm Michael, the second dumb Christian. (laughs) We love you guys. Catch you later. I'm just going to do a little outro. Guys, thank you so much for sitting with us, walking through, bearing these, enduring this kind of maybe frustrating conversation because we haven't been able to perfectly articulate what it means to walk through it and how to get through it. And I think that's kind of the point is, is that it's okay to be in that place uh be sure to check us out on youtube there's exclusive content dumb christian podcast hit subscribe like ring that bell here comes the butler i've got water for hot tea love you guys catch you later